I'm here in Hawara, where the Environmental Protection Authority is considering an application from Trans-Tasman Resources to mine the seabed in the South Taranaki Bight. Um, the South Taranaki Bight is home to really precious creatures like a distinct species of pygmy blue whales, um, endangered Maui dolphins, and also kurora, little blue penguins. Um, and Trans-Tasman Resources is proposing to mine 50 million tons of uh, the seabed each year for 35 years and then dump the majority of that back into the ocean, which will obviously have impacts on these precious creatures, both on the seafloor um, and in the ocean more generally. Um, we've been fighting this fight alongside Ngāti Ruanui, Kiwis Against Seabed Mining, um, and local communities here in Taranaki for more than a decade, and we've succeeded in preventing this project from going ahead to date, um, and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep fighting this project um, until uh, seabed mining is banned here in Aotearoa. Seabed mining stops go! <laughs> This proposed activity has met widespread uh, cross-spectrum um, opposition from society, and and uh, this is a we've been in this process for over a decade, uh, talking about this proposal. Um, just come out of the room in the hearing where TTR's lawyers are trying to kind of massage the decision makers into um, we can we can do this just set a bunch of conditions that control what we do, and that's purely uh, totally not possible, it's inappropriate, they don't have enough information uh, that describes the marine environment that they want to do this in, nor the impacts. And But we do know that you can't do this without causing major, major damage to the marine environment. And it's totally offensive to us as coastal people who care about the ocean. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Lyndon Devante, I'm with Climate Justice Taranaki. Uh, we've been uh, opposing this uh, application since 2017. Uh, we're very concerned about the effects it will have on the marine environment here. Uh, material harm is almost certain. Uh, that's what's being argued this morning, uh, but it's only the beginning. Uh, it's got a long fight again ahead of us, but uh, we're determined and supporting, uh, you know, mana whenua here. Uh, and yes, the cumulative effects over the coming decades of adding this to an already stressed environment uh, is just not on from our perspective. We're here, 12 years into the mark, fighting against this tanifa of trans Tasman resources who continuously do and push uh, for mining uh, for the purposes of greed, despite the fact that no one in our community wants it. Uh, no one has seen that the trade-off of economic promises exceeds the role that we have as kaitiaki environmentally. I'm really annoyed at a government that has now brought in a legislation or proposing legislation called Fast Track and Consent Bill. It is, um, in short, Fast Track is just another word for shortcut um, politics and we have never seen, uh, I guess, such an abuse of legislative powers to try and bring about the immediacy of this um, destruction. Trans-Tasman Resources have spent the day presenting their case to the Environmental Protection Authority about why they think they should be allowed to seabed mine um, in the South Taranaki Bight. Uh, they have failed to present evidence of environmental impacts that fill the gaps that the Supreme Court identified um, back in 2021, which was kind of the whole point of doing this rehearing. Um, what TTR is asking the EPA to do is to go ahead and grant them a consent now on the promise that they will do proper environmental surveying um, in the two years leading up to them beginning to mine but they haven't been able to say what they would do if their pre-mining surveying found significant marine mammal presence in the mining area, which our evidence already shows, for example, that there are distinct populations of pygmy blue whales in the mining area. In fact, the marine mammal expert who was speaking on behalf of TTR today did say that um, if that pre-mining monitoring didn't result in some sort of impact on the consent conditions, then there was no point in doing that pre-mining monitoring in the first place, which kind of undermines TTR's entire request to get that consent and then do the, do the surveying afterwards in the first place. Um, so it's been a bit of a circular argument today, but it's also been really heartening to see, you know, there was standing room only showing this, just the strength of the opposition um, to this mining operation going ahead. I think communities are pretty tired from having to fight this um, for more than a decade now, but people still came out in strength today to show their opposition, um, and that's really heartening, and we'll continue on the fight tomorrow and the 
the next day um, until seabed mining is banned in Aotearoa. So we here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, the, the government first opened for exploration for seabed mining in 2005. That's exploration, just looking at, looking at proposals and developing proposals. The exploitation phase, the actual mining phase, the rules and regulations were put in place in 2012. We're a decade or more ahead of the rest of the world in, in, in trialling uh, and, and scrutinising this activity. Uh, we've had three applications through the Environmental Protection Authority uh, and one of them's gone all the way to the Supreme Court and they've all been declined to this stage anyway. And you know this is actually a test case for this country but it's also a test case for the world because uh, you know if this gets the go-ahead then seabed miners will take you know comfort from the fact that um, a country with, a, with an enviable in environmental reputation has actually allowed a destructive practice to occur in their, uh, in their waters. So, uh, you know, we see this as a major challenge uh, for the future. And, uh, you know, we, we've got to change our ways in terms of our uh, frontier extractivism. You know, this is just another case of, uh, you know, let's find another place that we can mine. And, uh, you know, and, you know, they'll try and argue that, the, that, the, um, that they can mitigate the consequences. But, you know, experience has told us time and time again that that rarely actually works in practice and uh, you know, people are left decades later to clean up the mess. And uh, not to mention the, the impacts that it's going to have on uh, you know, rare and endangered species for which we have an obligation, both naturally, nationally and internationally. So uh, you know, we're very strong on the need that this should not go ahead. What we've learned through a long run of engaging in these processes assessing seabed mining is that it's socially, culturally, environmentally and legally unacceptable and inappropriate in the 21st century. We know uh, through our experience here that the same situation is likely to play out in deep waters in the Pacific, particularly in international waters and, and some jurisdictions that are looking at this. Uh, so um, we've walked down this path, uh, we advise others to get off it because it's going nowhere.